set up the recording. Okay. So the question I had was, uh, was how do I, how do I figure out the observational uh, units and how do I figure out the variables and what kind of variables they are? And I'm just going to take a look at our three examples from our explorations in 1.1 and kind of talk that through with each of these. Please, if you are listening along and you have a question about something I say, please speak up and, and let me know. Um, I don't have, I can't see the chat right now. So just unmute yourself and, and let me know if you got a question. Most of these uh, are the first couple of questions here in the exploration, like st uh, here, question two and three, what are the observational units and what's the variable and is it categorical or quantitative? So an exploration 1.1, can dogs understand human cues? This is about dogs and trying to understand, you know, can they look at what a person is doing like gesturing and um, could they tell what, what that gesture means? So what they set up was an experiment where they had two cups and the experimenter would perform some sort of gesture pointing, bowing, or looking toward one of the cups. And then they let the dog uh, choose one of the cups and the, um, and the cup would either, uh, excuse me, both cups would have some kind of treat or something in it, but they checked to see if the dog went to the one that was indicated. So the only difference between the two cups, they each had a little treat in it. The only difference was one was being gestured toward and the other was not. They tested six dogs, but we're just gonna look at one of the dogs and a couple of sets of his trials. And the dog's name was Harley. And they gave Harley 10 trials. So 10 times in a row, they had Harley sitting in front of the person they had the two cups set up, the person would point to one or the other of the cups, and then Harley would go and choose one of the cups and eat the treat out of it. And we're told that in the 10 times that he tried, nine of those times he chose the correct cup, the one that was being gestured to. What are the observational units? So here's one thing I'm gonna recommend. Um, I'm gonna recommend that when you're trying to figure this out, you can think about what the data would look like. So I'm gonna try doing a little bit of drawing here. Let's say I was the experimenter recording the results of this data. I would probably have some kind of table where I would say, what trial is this and what's the result, right? And so for trial number one, the result was he picked the correct cup. And for trial number two, he picked the correct cup. He, he went to the one gestured toward. And for number three, he, that was the one he got wrong, incorrect. And then et cetera, et cetera. You'd have this list that would go all the way down to trial number 10 and he's gotten all the rest of these correct. If you can envision this data, that can help you a lot with trying to understand the observational units and the variable. In general, when we record data, the observational units are the rows and the variable is the column. And that's how I'm gonna organize data in the, in the um, course. And that's how we have it here. So here's the variable. The variable we're looking at in this study is the result, whether he got it correct or incorrect. The observational units are the rows, each of the trials. So we had 10 pieces of data. We have 10 observational units. We had 10 trials that were, that was the 10 observational units. And then the column, the variable here would be the result. You could either call it result or you could call it correct or incorrect. Either of those would be uh, fine names for this variable. And the kind of outcomes we have are either correct or incorrect. Those are categories, they're not numbers. If we have numbers here, then it's likely that we have a quantitative variable. But since we have categories listed here, either correct or incorrect, they must be categorical. So there's one example of how I think it through. How are we doing folks? Anybody questions about that? Let's try another one. 
and clear this all out. And let's take a look at, um, this is exploration 1.2, tasting water. So here they're trying to get a sense of, um, do people like the taste of bottled water better than they like the taste of tap water? What they did was they set up a booth at a local festival and they put out four little cups of water for the people to try. And so the people would come in and they'd see the four cups and they'd taste each of them. Three of them had bottled water and one of them had tap water. So each subject or each person tried the four cups and then they responded which of those four cups that they preferred. And the researchers kept track of, and here this can help us think a lot about what's the observational units and what's the variable. What are they tracking? They kept track of how many people chose tap water in order to see whether tap, tap water was chosen significantly less often. So they're hoping to answer, do people prefer bottled water over tap water? <coughs> what are the observational units? What's the variable? Once again, I like to try to think about, okay, what are they recording? So, so I probably have some kind of little table again. And they'd say, okay, uh, a person comes in here and we look at their preference. And so when person number one comes in, they drink their four little cups and they say, I like number three, and that's bottled water. Now I could write down a number, like which number cup they want, but ultimately, what are they tracking? They're tracking how many people chose tap water. So really, we just wanna know, did they choose bottled or did they choose tap water? So person two comes in and maybe they liked the tap water best. And person three comes in and they like bottled, and person four comes in and they also like bottled, right? And down the line, we'd have these results and it says later in the exploration how many turned up of each. So once again, here the way I've recorded this data, the observational units are the rows. Each of these rows is a observational unit and the variable is the column. <clears throat> we have however many people showed up, that's however many observational units are. The observational units here are the people. What's the variable? Well, that would be their preference, whether it's tap water or bottled water. So you could label this variable as preference like I have, or you could label it as like bottled slash tap. Those are good variable names. Is it quantitative or categorical? Well, they're recording which category their preference was. Was it bottled or was it tap? So that's a categorical variable. So that's kind of how I would think through that. How are we doing, folks? You might have noticed both of these have been categorical variables in chapter one. That's all we're going to have are categorical variables. But it's still good to think it through because eventually we'll have different types of variables that you need to be able to choose between. All right, here's exploration uh, 1.3. And I have my little thing in the way here. Um, this one is about whether people use facial prototyping. So looking at a face, do people tend to think that face belongs with a certain name or not? Here's what happened. Participants were given two faces and I asked to identify which one was Tim and which one was Bob. What did the researchers record? They wrote that participants overwhelmingly agreed on which face uh, belonged to Tim and which belonged to Bob. Okay, so um, here's a little bit more about how they say to collect the data. Each student in your class will be shown the same two pictures of men's faces in the research study. 
You'll be asked to assign the name of Bob to one photo and the name of Tim to the other. Each student will then submit the name that he or she assigned to the picture on the left. So basically look at these two pictures, decide which you think is which is Tim and which is Bob, and then tell us who you think the person on the left is. All right, so observational units. Once again, what would the data look like here? Well, we're gonna have a bunch of students telling us who they think this is. And so the data might be, you know, the student's name, or we could just call them by number. Student number one said, uh, you know, I'll write uh, who's on the left here. And student number one says, Bob. And student number two says, Tim. And student number three says, Tim. And student number four says, Bob, et cetera. So what's our observational units? Well, once again, if I'm thinking about recording data like this, it's gonna be my rows. Each row represents a different observation. And so a different observational unit the students are the observational units. And however many students I have, that's gonna be my sample size, my number of observational units. And then the variable is once again, this column here of the data I recorded. So we said who's on the left is the data we're recording and that's the variable. who's on the left. Or if you wanted to, you could say something like Bob slash Tim would be another fine way to uh, label this variable. Is that categorical or quantitative? Well, each person I'm recording a category, either Bob or Tim, so we call that categorical. I'm gonna mention one last thing with categorical or quantitative. Some students uh, get confused, especially early on, thinking, well, we, we look at something like the percent of people that chose Bob. And that percent would be a number, right? Whatever that percent is, 48% of people chose Bob. 48%, that's a quantity. It must be a quantitative variable. Well, that's not quite accurate because 48% <clears throat> is actually a statistic that we calculated from the data. It's not the data itself. The data itself is these results here, which are categorical. All right, I hope that uh, hope that helps clarify some things for some folks. I'm going to go ahead. And